Seed starting for hydroponics. Today we're going to talk about how to start your seeds for your hydroponic system. And this is universal. This is for any hydroponic system that you may be working with, depending on your space allotment and what supplies you have. The things you're going to need is you're going to need a medium. And this could be anything that's spongy and absorbent. So what we have today right here, <laughs> oops, as I dump butter on my lap, <laughs> are these little sponge squares. And here, I'll rip some off so you can see. And these are the growth medium that came with the hydroponics kit that I reviewed that I got off of Amazon. But you can order more of this um, in the form of, of Oasis, which is a spongy foam-like material that's commonly used for floral arrangements. So I'm very familiar with that. And I found in doing some comparative price shopping, it is really price effective, as in it's probably cheaper per little square than anything else I could find. Another thing that you can use besides any of the pre-manufactured little squares or pods, which also includes rock wool, uh, some coconut core or peat moss squares, there's a wide variety. Basically, if you can think about it, somebody's probably made it and they're selling it. But you can also use just loose mixture of perlite or vermiculite. And the reason why this works well for seed starting is because it's going to create an environment that is moisture rich, but well draining. And so that way it'll keep the seeds moist, but it'll also allow them to breathe, limiting any mold or algae growth. Another method you can use, which I found to be extremely effective and kind of a no brainer, is a seed sprouter. So this is commonly used to sprout seeds for you to consume um, sprouts for sandwiches, salads, whatnot. But I've also used some of my sproutlings to transfer into my garden to grow the plant that sprouted and it works just fine. I've also found that in that environment you have the same situation of what you're looking through in the other media where you have a controlled moist environment that still has a lot of oxygen to limit mold and algae growth. Another method that I want to share with you, which I actually shared earlier in my pepper growing video, and that is the paper towel trick. Basically, you want to have a plastic container that has a lid. Uh, ideally, you'd want the lid to be transparent, but whatever you have that works for you, I think should be fine. What we typically use are the little trays that you get for Chinese takeout uh, because they're a nice sized tray with a, a well-fitted lid and that just works perfectly for me. So what I do is I take a paper towel, I fold it in half or whatever configuration I have to do for it to fit in the bottom of the tray and I moisten the towel really well. Now remember, I moistened it. I'm not leaving a bunch of water in there. I just want a nice moist paper towel. And then you can either sandwich your seeds in between the layers or just lay them on top and then close the lid. And that environment is gonna be like this little mini greenhouse environment. Now ideally you want to set this in a darkened area that stays relatively warm. And one of the places that I've found that is perfect and often not used is just above the refrigerator because it's a nice warm place that's relatively dark. It's probably not used for anything else and those trays slide in there quite easily. If you live in an area that cannot maintain the 70 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature that you want to have ideally your seeds sprouting, then you're probably going to want to get a heating mat. Heating mats are quite common for seed starting and can be found literally anywhere. I'm gonna put a link in the description below of a heating mat that I found on Amazon, but we actually don't use them here in Florida because we've never had a problem with the temperatures being too low. Another item that I found to be incredibly helpful with this seed starting procedure is a pair of tweezers. Now these tweezers have a little angled end there and 
there was a set of two of these included with my hydroponics kit that I got off of Amazon. So I found those to be really helpful. But before I got that kit, I would commonly just use the tweezers we had in the bathroom to use to help me manipulate the seeds into my growing medium. All right, so let's get started on the process. The first thing you want to do is to soak whatever growing medium you chose. Now, what I did is I have this tray. Now, this tray actually is a repurposed tray. It was a large container of mushrooms that we got at the grocery store. And I am constantly looking at all those plastic trays that we get for various products and trying to figure out how to repurpose them. So this one is perfect because it fits a large amount of those little squares in it. There's also flatter trays that work just fine. I keep those as well. I like to use those in my greenhouse for starting seedlings because they work as a saucer for multiple containers. Uh, we get those larger, lower trays. Often our grocery store will pre-package groupings of vegetables like squash or zucchini and plastic wrap them in those trays. I don't know why they do that. It seems kind of pointless to me, but I will gladly take those free trays and use them for my gardening needs. So once you have your seeds sprouted, if you're doing a method where you're sprouting them separately from your growing medium and the seed sprouter or the paper towel method, you want to take a healthy sproutling and put it in your growing media. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. So this is a mung bean sprout and as you can see it has a nice collection of roots. It has its uh, first true leaves up here and these are the little silly starter leaves. I forget what they're called. I'm gonna look it up and put it down here for you. <laughs> but what we're really looking for is the first true leaves. And those are the leaves that you are going to see occurring throughout the plant's growth. Once your sproutling has its first true leaves, then it is pretty much a safe bet that you can transfer it to its growing media. So as I said before, this is pre-soaked, so it's nice and moist. And these um, growing pods are perforated so they have a slit cut in them and many of the growing media that you can get commercially will have either a hole in them or a slit or some sort of place for you to place the seed and if they don't you can take a sharp knife and slit it down the side so that way you can open it sort of like an envelope and then just slide your sproutling into that crevice but because this one is slit. I was going to use the tweezers to uh, to do that, and then I thought that's just the silly way. So I I just with brute force tore it in half. So like what I was talking about with cutting it with this with the knife, and now I'm just going to put my seedling in there. I want to make sure that here I'll, I'll do it this way so you can see. This section down here where the roots begin, but it's kind of bent because it was in that sprout sprouting chamber, I'm going to put that so that way it's connect, it's covered by the sponge. But I want to make sure that my roots are hanging out the side, hanging out the bottom. As you can see, this sample has a pretty good amount of exposed roots but I actually want it to be slightly more so. So I'm going to go ahead and put this contained sproutling back in a tray with some water in the bottom. And what I want to do is to encourage more root growth. I want to have at least a full inch of exposed roots from my growing media before I transplant it into my hydroponic system. And I'm going to show you now why that is very important. So here you can see a sproutling that I have transplanted into my hydroponic system. And it is quite happy just hanging out there in its little pod. And let's see if we can remove it from the system. And you can see that it doesn't have any roots really exposed on the bottom, but I have shoved its little moisture pod all the way to the bottom of this container. 
And that's why there's so much empty space at the top because I pushed it all the way to the bottom. And that is really important because if you don't push it all the way to the bottom and it doesn't have that nice exposed root system, something like this is going to happen. See how the sponge is all dry because I didn't push it all the way down and then the sprout is dead. Bad news, I should have paid closer attention to that. Lesson learned. Now these sproutlings here, I actually started in the Aero Garden system. So they have a different core. They don't have the sponge material that came with this particular system. But if I pull this guy out, you will see it has a nice healthy bunch of roots hanging down. So there is no worries that it's not going to be able to get enough moisture and nutrients from the system. So like I showed in over at the hydroponic system, once my sproutling has gotten that good amount of exposure of its root growth, I'm going to place it in its container. And you want to be very delicate about this because like this one, for example, has roots just going out the side, out the bottom, out everywhere. And we don't want to damage those roots. So you're going to just gently nudge them with your finger so that way you can slide it down into the container. Now you might think, oh, it's in there. It's good, right? But see, it's all the way at the top. It still has all this space at the bottom. So I want to push it all the way down to the bottom. Now, if you still have your tweezers available, this can help you because they might fit in there better than your fingers, depending on how large your fingers are. So now I have it so that it's flush on the bottom with the growing media and my roots are hanging out below the container. And that way, once they're that full inch length, I know that they'll be able to sit into the reservoir and get all that moisture and nutrients. But he's not ready yet. I just wanted to show that for demonstration's sake. Now there is another method if you're not going to pre-sprout your sprouts, and that's a direct sow. So basically you're going to take your growing medium, make sure it's soaked at least four hours, overnight's perfect, and you're gonna take your handy dandy tweezers again, and you're going to place your seed directly in your growing medium and let that sit in a tray. Now my tray right now, because I'm still soaking my growing medium, is filled with water. Ideally, after your growing medium has soaked, you want to dump that water out and just use the tray as a reservoir to collect any moisture that may seep out of your growing medium. And also, when you need to replenish the moisture, it can be a reservoir then to hold it. You're gonna go ahead and take your seeds these happen to be a much larger seed. If you're dealing with something with a larger seed, you're only gonna to wanna to use one of those per growing square. So let's get a square out here to show you. And I'm just gonna go ahead, and this one's so large, I don't even need the tweezers. And I'm just going to push it down into my growing medium. Now, I want it so that way it's all the way down in there and you barely can see anything out the top because what I want to happen is I want the roots to come out the bottom and the sproutling to come out the top. So the seeds to be centrally located. For smaller seeds, particularly lettuces and herbs, you're probably going to want to put two to four seeds per little pocket. That's because germination rate isn't necessarily going to be 100% and you wanna make sure you have a good healthy sprout in each one of your squares is this is going to save time because you won't have to go back and replant if that one seed didn't germinate. If you are extra frugal and you have plenty of time and you have an extended growing season, then you can plant one seed per pod. That is your choice. Uh, in my experience, seeds are relatively inexpensive, particularly if you're saving your own seeds because then it's just free, right? Um, so saving the time and making sure you maximize your growing period is optimal and I would suggest doing the multiple seed sowing process. That said, if your hydroponic system is indoors, then growing season really shouldn't be an issue as you can control the climate of your indoor situation to mimic any growing season that that particular plant may wish to have. You can have summer in the middle of winter, you can have winter in the middle of summer. It's all dependent on what your system is and what 
resources you have available to you. The one thing I didn't mention in this seed growing, seed sprouting process is light. And that's because initially light really isn't so much of a factor. You really don't have to worry about light until three to four days into the process. After three to four days, if you see some activity of those leaves starting to pop out, that is a good time to introduce light. If you have a sunny window, you can simply move your tray to said sunny window. That is, if you don't live with a house full of cats like we do, then that might be a recipe for disaster. What we typically do when we're ready for our seeds to receive some light is I move them to the area where I have my arrow garden set up. That way, the light spill from the arrow garden is going to give enough light for photosynthesis for my sproutlings. Another thing is initially, you want to just use pure water. You don't want to add nutrient to the seeds as the seed itself has enough nutrient to create a sproutling. It's not until after that three to four day time period that you want to start adding nutrients. And even at that time, you want to make sure it's very diluted. Let me show you an example. This is the nutrient solution that we're currently using in our hydroponics. And this is Emerald Harvest's Grow, Micro, and Bloom set. So this is the grow container. I have Micro and Bloom over there. And on the back, it has a peel away label that gives you uh, this handy chart of telling you how many milliliters per gallon you want to add of each of the three main ingredients to your hydroponic system based on the stage of growth your plant is at. So for seedlings and cuttings, which is when, when we would start adding nutrient to our sproutlings, you would want two milliliters of grow, two milliliters of micro, and two milliliters of bloom. The caps are pre-measured to make it super easy for you to add your nutrients. You just want to remember that this is per gallon. So what I do is Thrifty Derica saves one gallon jugs and I label those and I pre-mix my nutrients based on what my plant needs are. So I will have a seedling mix, I will have a, a blooming flower mix, I'll have a fruiting mix, and that way I can add that um, to the, whatever system I have that's growing that particular stage of plant. Now, as you can tell by the seed sprouter, this is a closed system, so it maintains its humidity. And the paper towel method that I talked about earlier, you're gonna have a lid on that system. So that is a enclosed system that's going to have a controlled amount of humidity. But what about this? What if we use this to start our seeds rather than to continue growth on our sprouts? Well, it's pretty simple. Just take a plastic film and cover the top. If you don't like using plastic film, which I don't particularly like, but I do keep some just for occasions like this, you can also use a wax treated cloth. This is going to uh, keep the moisture inside your unit rather than letting it escape because the wax permeating the cloth is going to create that moisture barrier. A rough time frame for when your sproutlings will be ready to be moved into your hydroponic system is 12 to 14 days. But again, check the roots exposure and you are looking ideally for one inch of root beyond your little sponge. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. And if you've enjoyed it, look up. There's another one you might like equally as well. Thank you for watching.